All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna cover the ball and socket joints in our bodies and their different types of movements that we definitely need to know before we go in and take the Mblex. So that's what we're gonna cover today. Now real quick, at the very end, I'm gonna ask you two questions. One of them's gonna be fairly easy, but the other one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. So I would encourage you to stay to the very end to get those two questions and see if you get them right. All right, so we are gonna cover ball and socket joints. The two that we're gonna cover today are the glenohumeral joint, and we're also going to cover the acetabulofemoral joint. Now there's something interesting about medical terminology that we definitely need to have an understanding of, and that is that oftentimes word parts are connected by a vowel. And so in this case, that vowel is going to be an O. And so here we have gleno and then humeral. And so gleno stands for glenoid cavity. And humeral stands for the head of the humerus. So the glenohumeral joint is going to be our shoulder joint. And that's going to be where the glenoid cavity, which is a small little fossa or a little small socket that's on the scapula, is going to articulate with the head of the humerus. So that is going to be the glenohumeral joint. Now, at this joint, we are going to be able to do flexion. We're gonna be able to do extension. We can do abduction and adduction. There's something important about abduction and adduction. The way that we oftentimes pronounce it is abduction. I can say abduction, but because abduction and adduction sound fairly the same, we enunciate the abduction so that you know that it's being abducted away from my body and it's being abducted from this midline. Now, adduction is coming closer. We're adding it back closer to the midline of my body. So abduction and adduction. Now starting here, in the horizontal plane, we can do horizontal adduction, again bringing it down to this mid, or bringing it to this midline, and we can also do horizontal abduction, bringing it, bringing it away from that midline. Now, we can also do medial rotation, again, towards that midline, lateral rotation, and this is taking place at the glenohumeral joint. Don't get confused at this bend in the elbow. A lot of students see this bend and they think, and they, and they focus here. It's not there. It's going to be at the glenohumeral joint. You always have to remember which of the joints is the movement taking place at. So I can put my arm straight and I can do medial rotation, lateral rotation, but if you see the bend, you can see it a lot better. Medial rotation and lateral rotation when I have the bend at the elbow. And so that's why there's a little bend here at the elbow. So just make sure you are understanding where the movement is taking place. Now, since the glenohumeral joint is a ball and socket joint, we can do circumduction, which gives us the most range of motion that any of our joints can do. And so ball and socket joint, make sure you understand that. Now that's gonna be one of the six synovial joints that you should already have an understanding of, but I am gonna break this down into about six videos where we go through each one of them and their movements, all right? Now, moving on to the acetabulofemoral joint. Again, connected with a O. So there's two different bones being connected here. We have the acetabula, which stands for the acetabulum. What in the world is an acetabulum? Well, an acetabulum is going to be the socket that is going to be on the pelvis. And so I'll put that picture up here for you to see. Now, the way that I remember this and the way that I tell all my students to remember what the acetabulum is, is I tell them to sit their acetabulums down. <laughs> so hopefully that helps you remember your acetabulum. And so it's gonna be that socket where the head of the femur articulates with that bone. And it creates our ball and socket joint, which we can do flexion, we can do extension. We can also do abduction. We can do adduction. Now I can definitely do circumduction, right? If I wanted to, I could put my foot behind my head, but I can't. <laughs> but I do have that range of motion in my hip. Now there's another thing I wanna also mention, and that's that the acetabulofemoral joint is shortened. And there are oftentimes, you'll see coxal joint. 
as the acetabulofemoral joint. For short, it's shortened into the coxal joint. Now, I need you to know it by the acetabulofemoral joint. And the reason being is because in the FSMTB's Inblex study guide, these are the same organization that creates the Inblex. They use acetabulofemoral joint. So you need to know it by that term. All right. Now I can also do medial rotation at the acetabulofemoral joint, and I can also do lateral rotation at the acetabulofemoral joint. Now, one more thing before we go to those questions, bear in mind that medial rotation can also be called internal rotation because you're going inward and lateral rotation can also be called external rotation because you're going outward. So just bear that in mind. Okay. They can use those terminologies interchangeably. So just make sure you understand both of those. Awesome. All right. So I promised you that we would have a few questions. So I want you to tell me what movement this is when I do this at the glenohumeral joint, what movement is taking place? Any ideas? All right. So if you said abduction, you are correct. And the reason being is because I am abducting my arm away at the glenohumeral joint, right? but I might have thrown you off with a little bend in my elbow. Again, you have to pay attention to where the movement is taking place at the glenohumeral joint. All right, so now let's go to our second picture. Now this one's gonna be a little more challenging. What movement is taking place at the acetabulofemoral joint when I do this? Any ideas? All right, so this movement here is going to be external rotation or lateral rotation at the acetabulofemoral joint. Now, just because there's a bend at the knee, don't let that confuse you. You're, what you're doing is you're seeing the foot go inward, and so you're thinking, oh, that has to be medial rotation. Well, no, you have to always pay attention to the joint that is moving. And in this case, it's the acetabulofemoral joint, which is going laterally. And so make sure you understand that as well. All right, so I hope you all did good on those questions. I would encourage you, if you wanna learn more about this information and you wanna dive deeper into the material that is likely to show up on the Inblex, I would encourage you to check out my Patreon page. Or if you want one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me, you can also check out my website where I list all of my availability. Awesome, y'all have a wonderful week ahead and I will see you in the next video. Y'all take care.